Hello guys and gals, welcome back to another episode of Haunted Gaming. This time we do two creepypastas based around the concept of Zorax. Some of you guys may remember this creepypasta, it was a, it was a, well I'm not even going to say it, uh, you should go check that video out. It's basically a creepypasta where the story, it, it's very vague and as it builds up it leads to a really big mindfuck at the end, a, a big shocker. And so these two creepypastas sort of follow in that aspect as well where they lead up to a mindfuck at the end. Now these two passes are uh, incredibly short and again because of the nature I do have to read it word for word because of the mindfuck aspect. So without ado let's begin reading the very first one, The Man in Red. It's been days since the massacre and I pray I'm not the next in line to receive an early grave, but our kings is different. Life in this world is quite relaxing whenever you don't have shit getting thrown at you, getting eaten by creatures, or getting jumped by some jerk who just doesn't care. If I recall correctly, it was just another day for me and my peers when the boss slammed open the door suddenly. It scared some of them. One guy even hid in his house and refused to be coaxed out of it. Anywho, our boss had a slight look of fright on his face. This has never happened before, he exasperated. Our troop is among the best in this world. What happened? A friend of mine asked. According to Sergeant Blue, a man in red had been spotted traversing the world, killing anybody that so much as looks at him. I could not believe it. You're making this up, right? I've timidly asked. Hell to the no, our boss replied. This man's even got the king word, and we don't even know. And we know it's tough to instill fear into the king. Does anybody know what this guy wants? Somebody else asked. I don't know. All I know is this cycle must be stopped at all costs. The fate of this world, as well as the others, is at stake, the boss exclaims. The next day, we leave the safety of our fortress and make way for the lush world set in the tropics. I've been here on vacation before, but this is no time to relax. Upon arrival, we set up camp and make plans for when and if the man in red shows up. I'm given the task of keeping an eye out due to my small size and lack of combat skills. While searching for an ideal place to keep watch, I get a sense of dread, but I merely just shake it off. It's been a long day, I need some rest, that's all. I tell myself, and before I know it, I find a nice cliff that overlooks the sea and soon I feel my eyes close. The next day I wake up and stare aimlessly towards my left since my group heard that this this is where the man in red will strike. Speaking of which, what does this man in red look like anyways? Unfortunately I soon learned the answer. It was around noon and I was starting to get bored along with some of my peers when he came. I didn't get much of a good look at the man in red but what he did horrified me and quite possibly scarred me for life. One of my peers threw a boomerang at the guy but he just jumped over it and threw a fireball he conjured up at him. The boomerang guy screamed in agony as he burned to death. Then, two of my peers walked towards him. Bad idea. The man in red just jumped on their heads and which followed with a sick crunch as their necks snapped. Feeling brave, a guy in green and yellow threw bombs at the guy in red. However, it didn't really do much to help our situation, knowing this was a lost cause. I hightailed it out of there all the way back to our fortress. Days after that horrible, gruesome massacre at the beach, I started having nightmares. It's the same one every time. That day will forever play out in my head. Each time the man in red looks more demonic and my peers look more creepyish themselves. As I write this, I hear the sounds of a door open. Curious to see what it is, I rush to see the cause of the disturbance. Then I see a familiar figure and just as I black out, I hear him speak. It's a me, Mario! I just finished playing one of the scariest video games ever. Now hear me out before saying, oh he's probably just a guy that gets scared of everything. I don't get scared of video games or movies. I played many survival horror games and have seen many horror movies in my day. The only thing that made me just a tiny bit scared were some parts of Penumbra and Condemned. Amnesia was pretty good, everything else was just boring. This game was very, very different. You aren't given any sort of backstory to the game at all. As soon as you press play, it throws you right into the game. However, I was able to piece together what the story basically is through finally beating this little brick shitter. Apparently, you're a madman. You're never given a name, but you can guess what it is if you pay attention to the title screen. For some reason, you escaped from whatever mental hospital room you were hiding in. Now, the very horrid state of your mind has transformed the halls of the hospital into nothing but a pitch black maze, with the only lights being the walls, which glow a de deathly blue. 
Your character is apparently some type of mad cannibal that you can barely control. You can force him to turn corners into a creepy hallway, but not much else can be done. Your character seems to grab anything to try to eat it. Whatever it is in front of him is thrown into his mouth and he munches it down. While playing the game, you're being chased by four hideous and fucking scary ghost monsters. You can't hurt them at all, and to come even close to one is instant death, in which the ghost latches onto you and rips you inside all, all while you hear the horrible noise of your body being torn. You can, however, eat some odd object hidden in the maze, after which your character goes into an even more unstable state. You can literally eat the ghost monsters. Your character runs right up to them and devours them, only leaving their eyes. There aren't any words to describe how horrific and terrifying this game is, and I don't want to spoil the surprise for you. Just go ahead and try it for yourself. Google the word Pac-Man, and you'll find it on the first search. That is all. So, there we go. Two creepypastas, Man in Red and the scariest video game ever. Now, these creepypastas follow in the same footsteps as, you know, Zorax. A mindfuck creepypasta, if you will, where... You know, the rest, the beginning of the story starts out with just this little odd new place, and in the end you get this little punch to your stomach. When you find out it's just a whole, it's, it's really based around the shock value and the build-up. But the problem here with these two creepypastas, while they're not horrible, they, they're not really subtle, by any means. You know, for example, let's look at the man in red. The title alone leads you to believe that it could be a Mario creepypasta. Now, hey, this could be me going into it, you know, knowing that it's a gaming creepypasta and just looking at the man in red I get the idea that it is you know possibly something to do with Mario now when you get into the final second paragraph if you will where it's like one of my Peters threw a boomerang at the guy I mean the entire paragraph instantly just gives you a dead giveaway that this is a Mario creepypasta I mean when you say the man in red just jumped on their heads which followed by a sick crunch as their neck snapped you could have just said the man in red just simply crushed their skulls. I mean, that could have implied they use, the man in red used some blunt trauma weapon, I don't know. But when you, di when you directly say jumped on their heads, it just kills a subtlety. Now, I mean, for some people it really also depends how much you play a certain series. I mean, you know, if you, if you play the Mario series a lot, you, you'll know what this is way back from the beginning. And say, if you didn't play the Mario series, you might not know it at all. And if you played it a little, this might be working in great effect to you, because when you read the last line, it's a me, Mario, and you don't know much about Mario, you might get that idea. But then again, this gives you very dead giveaways. I mean, it's not horrible, but by any means, if it used a little bit more subtlety, it would have been a whole lot better. As well as a little bit more build-up, you know, just, you know, more... That, that's all I really have to say about the man in red. It's not bad, but it definitely needed a little more build-up and not too many giveaways. Moving on to the next one, the scariest video game ever, which was a Pac-Man creepypasta. This was pretty good too. This was actually, in my opinion, a little bit better than The Man in Red, except this also has plenty of giveaways as well. For one, when it says, a pitch black mace with the only light being the walls, which glow a deathly blue. They didn't really have to say that though. I mean, you could have just said it was dark hallways. I mean, that would have worked. You didn't have to say the walls glow, glow, glowed like blue. I mean, I, underst I understand, but at the same time, I think if that was omitted, it would have actually given a little bit more. I mean, to me, that was a dead giveaway. Also, when you go towards the end, the final paragraph, final second paragraph, if you will, where it says, you can, however, eat some odd objects eh, hidden in the maze, and you can eat the ghost monsters. That, to me, is a dead giveaway when it says you literally eat when you're describing the monster itself like the ghost monster I mean if you look back at Zorax it used clever it used basically clever pronunciation and spelling to guide you away like the day crew for example you know if you look at it really carefully the day crew could really just have been the Deku you know what I mean so that's what we have and plus it describes what they would wear like gas masks and you can see the resemblance but over here it's just a dead giveaway to ghost monster now, I'm bringing these two up because, hey, there's not too many of these mind-fucking creepypastas, if you will. So, maybe there might be more, and if you got a better one of these, please tell me in the comments below. Because these ones are actually done really well. Like, so far the best one is still in this category, Zorax. But, these two aren't horrible, and in all respects, they did a pretty decent job. And if they were a little more subtle, and they didn't give away the whole thing, then it would have been a whole lot better. 
And if it had more build-up, it would have been way more better. But yeah, that's really it. They're not horrible. They could use some improvement, and that's really it. So that's been these two creepypastas we've done, the Man in Red and the scariest video game ever. And please write in the comments below what would you rate them and what would you change to make them better. This has been another episode of Haunted Gaming, and if you like what you saw, then like, comment, and subscribe. This is me, Mudahar, and I'm out. <laughs>